So this is the longest we've been out. We are out for seven full days. Um, and it's got me thinking that there's a lot of things that you need to do to prepare and more importantly, bring backups and alternatives just in case. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through some of the upgrades we've made for this specific camping trip. One, we got rid of our old Coleman cooler for this lifetime cooler. It's not as expensive as like a Yeti or something similar, but it does the same thing. We put ice in it last Saturday and it's now Friday. It's got these cool latches on it. And you can see it's clearly still holding ice, which is great. It comes with two bottle openers on the side as well as a place to put a padlock on both sides. Um, this one is certified by the Interagency Grizzly Bear Committee. It is bear proof. And this is a 65 quart. Last time we had a 50 quart. So this gave us a lot of extra space. Um, you can get a full case of beer in here. With like 40 pounds of ice. Um, the only caveat is it's been very cold, so our ice is not melting at the same rate that it normally would melt at. Um, and then last thing, it's got this cool little um, drain on the side because to keep your ice colder, you don't want to keep the water in there. I think the only downside to this is these handles. They're kind of awkward. It'd be nice if they were more solid handles or just molded into the side here. We made sure to bring extra camping stakes, which is good because we've bent a couple, we've lost a couple. Um, and then last night I was freaking out, um, thinking that what would happen if I lost my car key. So probably bring a spare car key as well. That would be smart. And then we got a couple of Pelican cases. For some of our gear. So this one specifically is just for the GoPro stuff. Backup clothes. So thankfully I had an extra pair of jeans because one of my pairs is covered in dog vomit. It smells so bad. So I was pretty happy to have this backup pair. And that goes for things like backup shoes. Um, I'm about to take these boots off because they're starting to hurt my feet and probably put my gym shoes on. Obviously we have upgraded our propane tank. So this is a, a 40 pound tank versus the, nat the normal 20 pound tank. This is a lot of propane. Um, which is great because we've had the heater going every single night that we've been out this week. Um, the only problem is it's in front of our other modification, which is the tongue box. And it kind of gets in the way here. The key is right here and we can like barely get to it. it we could do it, but it's a pain in the ass, especially when your hands are numb and from a blizzard. <laughs> you know, we have water in our camper here, it holds 24 gallons, but we also bring uh, an extra 12 gallons that sit in the bed of the truck, just in case. We've had plenty of water this time. Um, there's still six extra gallons sitting in the truck. We also got these guys on Amazon, um, which has been helpful from keeping this from sinking into the sand. The little buddy heater we have, we have it running off of a 20 pound propane tank, but we didn't think to bring any one pound backup tanks just in case. Our portable buddy heater. Which has been very useful. Unfortunately, the hose that we use for this um, sprung a leak like right here. And so this is useless and our coffee maker that I'm gonna show you here in a minute is now also useless. So next time we come out, We'll make sure to bring some extra one pound camping gas tanks to use with this. I thought that it would be nice using the 40 pound tanks. Um, unfortunately, these are useless if the hose is useless. Which brings us to our Coleman coffee maker. This will make 10 cups of coffee before we were using the French press, which now we're back to using like I said, because the line is cracked. Um, but this is, actually works really well when the propane is working. We had initially hooked this up to the line that comes off of our camper and it wasn't getting enough gas. It's been brewing for about 
40 minutes now, and it doesn't even have a full cup of coffee. Once we used a different line and a different tank, this thing worked really well. We did a little more trial and error with the coffee maker, and we swapped it to just a regular tank and a smaller hose, and the flame is so much bigger now, and it is like actually brewing coffee. Like, look at that. This thing might not be a piece of junk. And we drink a lot of coffee. This is some serious gourmet shit. And then food, we have food that will spoil, and then we also make sure we have food that won't spoil, and we have enough food in case we were stuck out here for an extra couple days or something. Um, but it's also important to note, because we keep thinking we're out here in the middle of nowhere, and we are, but also on a map, we're 30 minutes from the nearest town grocery store. So it's not like it's the end of the world if we had to go get something. It's more of like an inconvenience. And the final thing that you guys have already seen, but I want to show you, is the Bighorn Pizza Oven. So this thing's super cool. In the back here, you throw some wood pellets. The only issue with this is that it takes kind of a long time to get it lit. So we've been using hot coals from the fire to get the pellets lit. Backup lighters. This whole thing gets incredibly hot. So it comes with this tool to be able to pull everything out. So this is where your pellets go. And this is what catches all your ash. On the front here, this is where you put your pizza in. Slide it in there with a pizza paddle. Um, There's a very thick insulated door, door here. The whole thing seems to be stainless steel. The smokestack comes off. Hmm. Like that. And you can store it in here. And then the legs underneath fold up. Um, it's a little heavy, but overall this thing was awesome we've made pizza with it twice and tonight we're gonna make pizuki for courtney's birthday ah, if we can get the, the cookie dough to thaw anyway we didn't bring any backup sheets but we did bring extra pairs of blankets so all in all we had two we had four sleeping bags and two blankets unfortunately two of the sleeping bags and both of the blankets are covered in vomit and diarrhea even after i washed them oh and before you go out probably check your first aid kit we had apparently used up all of our ibuprofen on our last couple trips and so we didn't we did have more ibuprofen it was in another first aid kit so back up to the backup right um, but had we checked it before we left, we could have refilled that uh, first aid kit. I think that's all of the gear that we've upgraded to. That's a cool pizza! pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, freak.